Hey, seasoned athletes, I'm Robin Leggett, and this is episode 62 of the Seasoned Athlete Podcast. Seasoned Athlete is your home for inspiring stories and motivational advice from competitive athletes representing a wide variety of sports who all share one common bond. They are all over 40 years old. We're here to prove one story at a time that age does not have to prevent you from achieving your bold athletic and fitness goals. If you like what you hear, I would love it if you'd subscribe, share with your friends, and leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. And if you really love us, you can support our ability to continue to bring inspirational stories to you by way of either a one-time donation or by becoming a monthly sponsor. Just go to seasonedathlete.me and click on the support seasoned athlete buttons to help support this DIY independent podcast. Today, we are digging deep into coaching and training to be the athlete you are meant to be, no matter where you start with my guest, Coach Q. Q is someone I've known for a little while in the local coaching community, and I really enjoyed sitting down with him to share his perspective about moving well, what it takes to live an athletic life at any age or stage of your life, and the importance of working with a coach if you want to get to the next level. Just a heads up, Coach Q tells it how he sees it, and that does include some colorful language. So consider yourself properly advised. Without further ado, here is my interview with Coach Q. I am here with Coach Q. Coach Q, welcome to the Seasoned Athlete Podcast. Well, thank you for having me. I'm so excited you're here. We've been wanting to have this conversation for a long time. And, uh, you know, we're, you're busy, I'm busy, but we made it happen. So, um, and you're in my gym today. So welcome. For the second time, I'm in your gym. The first time was hanging that rope, right? <laughs> you hung up our climbing rope. I, we would, we would be nothing without you. We, it was funny. Your husband, when I showed up to hang the rope, he's looking at me like, ah, oh, I, I should have done that. <laughs> He probably, he was thinking, yeah, I should have done that, but I'm glad that Q did. <laughs> Better him than me. So Q, uh, welcome to the podcast. Uh, are you ready to drop some seasoned athlete knowledge on our listeners today? I'm ready to drop some gems on you guys. Heck yeah. Coach Q, you are a movement coach. Can you tell me a little bit about just a general overview about uh, what you do? Gladly. So everything these days you hear is about movement, 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 right? I have over 20 different certifications in training, coaching, and therapy, right? So what I do is help athletes move better, you know? And that comes with a lot of different things. So I don't like to say that I'm a special, I specialize in anything, you know? What I do is I have a lot of different things in my tool belt that I add to my coaching and to my therapy to, to build performance athletes, you know, or performance humans. I, I work with a general pop. I work with athletes. And my main thing is, how do you feel? How do you move? Because if I can get you moving well, I'll get you feeling well too. And I'll get you performing well. So it's it's all those things together. And you know, movement, it, it's so funny because I think people specialize in a lot of different areas, but it really all breaks down to movement. Are we moving well? Are we not moving well? Uh, when it comes to to the over 40 population, do you work primarily with the over 40 population? The average age of people that I'm working with now is about 35, you know. Um, I would say my my oldest client right now is 71 years old, and my youngest is about 23, you know. So I work with, you know, people, and, and trust me, when I say 71 and 23, I get 23-year-olds that come in and they move like a 71-year-old, you know, and I'm looking at them going, you're 23. You just got out of diapers. Why are you moving so crappy, right? And so, it's the diapers. It's, <laughs> <laughs> so they come in, and I, I I give them an assessment first. I'm um, functional movement screening level two. That's the first thing I do when you come in the gym. I don't just throw people in there and put them through a workout and and try and punish them. What I want to do is see how you move, how you function, and what's going to benefit you when it comes to coaching and training. You know? Yeah. And before we move forward, because I asked this of all my guests, what is your age at this moment in time? I'm on the chart that um, it, it's starting to downswing now. <laughs> next, year I'll, next year I'll be 50, you know, and, you know, I, I tell people at 50 years old, I move better than I was at 25, you know, so there's reasons behind that kind of th stuff. And, and hopefully we'll talk about that today. Well, shit, we could get right into that because, you know, you just mentioned I'm about to be on the downswing. But the whole purpose of this podcast is to help people avoid 
experiencing that downswing that, you know, when you get into your 50s, when you get into your 60s, it doesn't necessarily have to be a downswing. So I want to know about your athletic background. I want to know, I mean, (laughs) do we have enough time for that? I want to know, can you tell me a little bit about your athletic background? How, you know, what, how you got in, what kind of sports you played growing up or, you know, your general how you moved into this world of uh, movement. Well, the funny thing is, is I have, and my mom, my mom showed me this picture when I was a kid, I used to draw bodybuilders, right? I, I was at a, um, I, I think it was elementary school. We went to the zoo in Atlanta and a guy came up who was a kind of a motivational speaker and he was a bodybuilder and they called him Superman blunt, right? This guy was jacked. And so after seeing him, I'm like, that's what I want to do because I was a skinny kid, you know, so I always wanted to lift weights, but I didn't have that kind of stuff available to me, you know? And so, you know, I I would tell my parents, as soon as I'm big enough and old enough, I'm going to lift weights and I'm going to get really big. And they were like, sure you are. son." (laughs) So my, my career, you know, I, I enlisted in the Marine Corps when I was 18 years old and the Marine Corps was the first time I really ever got a chance to go in the gym and lift weights seriously, you know? And so when I started lifting weights in the Marine Corps, I went down there and I started powerlifting, you know? So powerlifting was my introduction to, to athletics, you know? And so after powerlifting, I started seeing the muscle that I was putting on. I took a trip down to Palm Springs and met a guy named Chris Cormier, who was a freaking phenomenal bodybuilder. He ended up being one of the three best in the world um, on the Olympia stage. And this guy like kind of dropped some knowledge on me about bodybuilding and whatnot. And he started, I started going every weekend training in bodybuilding. Soon thereafter, I started competing in bodybuilding. And so that was what took my focus for about, God, man, it was about 15 years of me bodybuilding, you know? And, um, the thing that stopped me with bodybuilding is I went in 2005 to Atlanta to do the nationals and found out my father had uh, lung and brain cancer. So that put a lot of things in perspective for me. And I just, I kind of said, you know, I don't want to do the bodybuilding thing anymore because I honestly started feeling like it wasn't the healthiest sport for me to be in. There's a lot of stuff involved in bodybuilding, which, which I won't get into right now, but it, for me, I wanted to feel better, move better, run and do all the other stuff that I wasn't doing athletically as a bodybuilder. So that's what got me to the point where I'm right now. And right now, what is that point? What are you doing now? Right now, I do whatever I want to do, really, to tell you the truth. You know, I, I, I live by this, this philosophy at this age of the type of training that I do. If I want to go hike 15 miles this weekend, I'm conditioned to do that. If I want to go run a marathon, it's going to take a few weeks for me of running to actually, like, get that, you know, But I can go run a marathon and and feel good about it. I run 5Ks all the time. And what I'm looking at is how fast is my 5K, you know? Um, Earlier, we were talking about the Spartan race. I run Spartan races. I don't do trifectas in a year anymore because what I like to do is I want to see how much I'm improving, you know? So I will do a race and do the same race the next year. They may change the topography, but that mileage, I want to see that I can beast that freaking race that I kind of struggled with the year before and see if my time got better. And year to year, the training that I'm doing, I see my time's getting better. My body feels better. I'm moving better. I'm almost down into full splits now again. And like I said, I'm almost freaking 50 years old. So that's, that's an accomplishment for me. You were probably weren't doing full splits when you were bodybuilding, right? Actually, (laughs) because I came from a martial arts background too, I could get into a full split But when I was bodybuilding, I actually freaking pulled a hamstring and I never did another full split, you know? So now I'm back to that kind of stuff. How many years has it been? Oh God, I was 24 when I pulled a hamstring. So that's only like two, three years, you know? Yeah, right, right. Now you you already admitted your age. You you know that, right? We it just happened like three minutes ago. Yeah. So let's let's talk about that now because you said, you know, I on one hand you're like, well, I'm heading to the downswing, but then a second later you said, I'm feeling better now than I felt in my 20s. I mean downswing in age, not downswing in how I feel in my performance, right? Because, you know, how many people live to be 100 years old, right? right. Not many. That's like few and far between. So the average, I would say the ex- life expectancy for, let's just say me, a black male, right? It's about 68 years old, right? So 50 is the freaking downswing, right? So it's a downswing of age where your right. life, but for me, I feel like I'm gonna live to 200 years old, right? So I got bit by a vampire in Romania, man. So I'm I'm good. <laughs> so at this stage in your life, personally, what do you think is the key to how you're feeling now? The key to how I'm feeling is paying attention to the maintenance that I'm doing and 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 removing my ego, man, from my training. You know, um, 
at my strongest, I could deadlift 700 pounds, you know, and I could squat 600 and something pounds, I could bench 550 and those things. I don't do that stuff anymore. And come to think of it, back then, I got injured, man. I got injured with my back. I got injured with my pec. I got injured with different things. And a lot of that was ego. So I've removed my ego from my training. And I look at the the quality of training, how I feel doing that workout. I saw a guy the other day post about, you know, running and, you know, setting out to go run 10 miles and running five and feeling like that was enough and then bailing from that run. And I was like, yeah, that's good, man. That's instinctive, you know? So the type of training that I do now is more instinct based. If I feel like doing it, I go do it, you know? I also challenge myself with with mental stuff where it's like, you know, I think um, last week was a my coin phrase of mindfuck week. And mindfuck week for me is where you go out and you take stuff and you, you set on you, set a goal that you don't think you're going to finish, right? And the whole way through it, it's punishing, man. It makes you feel like this is freaking bullshit. I'm never going to get done with this. But at the very end, when you're done with it, you're like, oh man, I did that, right? So that's a mark on your wall that you say, I did that. So now you take that self-doubt and freaking trash that shit, right? So you know, I do that kind of stuff with my training, with the clients that I train. I fuck with their minds so that their minds get stronger instead of getting weaker, you know? Yeah. You know, something interesting that I took from what you just said is because there's kind of two schools of thought. One is like, I train instinctive. If you don't feel like finishing the 10 miles, that's your body saying, hey, maybe it's time to pull back. And then you go into mindfuck week (laughs) where it's like, but now we got to go to another level of suffering and, uh, you know, because mental training is as important as physical training. You know, I think you have an understanding of where you're at because you've been doing this forever. Um, when you're training somebody who might have a new goal, like maybe they want to run a race for the first time, any kind of race, we, you know, a lot of our listeners, I think, like running road races or obstacle races or triathlons, things like that. If you have a newer client, um, how do you sort of toe that line between instinctive training and mental toughness training? Well, when I say instinctive training, instinctive training is for me. You know, that's my thing. That's how I train. My clients, we follow a program. You know, I just, like I said, I've been doing this for 20 something plus years. I just now created a system. You know, after all this trial and error, created a system, a program for the way I train athletes to see the results that I want to see. So if a person comes to me first time or not, you know, if if it's an, an athlete that's been training with me for years, I'm still going to try to get that mindset stronger. I'm going to give you a program of things that we're supposed to be doing and accomplishable goals that we can look back and say, okay, the program is working, you know? My thing is fitness, it's the therapy side, it's the mindset side, it's the rest, it's all those things, man. So when you create a program, if you're training like instinctively like me, I know what I got to get better at, you know? I know how I feel. I've been doing this for so long. I know what I want to do, you know? And so when I walk into the gym, if it's leg day, you know, and I feel like doing leg day with sleds instead of doing a leg press, that's my instinct telling me, go do something else that's going to accomplish the same type of goals, but it's going to give me a a fresh, different idea, you know? So when somebody is newer to all of this, like, I just want to kind of break down sort of like the bare bones of, I don't, not necessarily the system, but sort of the the key elements that people need, especially as they're starting in their 40s, their 50s, their 60s, or 70s, um, the key elements that you think are necessary to take them from couch to course. That's that's a good one. You know, every single time that a person comes to see you as a coach, right? They come and they say, hey, I wanna do a, try one of your classes. They've already made up in their mind that they they, they need a lifestyle change, right? They, they wanna do something different. So. For me, a new person coming in, it's like, okay, you made a decision. You set a goal for yourself. I'm going to help you reach that goal. So, you know, I I, I was thinking about this earlier today. You know, people always say, you know, showing up is half the battle. Uh, No, you know, showing out is what you want to do, right? So if you're showing up for my workout just for you being there, you're not getting shit out of that, you know? But if you're engaged... If you're engaged in those workouts, then you're going to get something. So a person just coming in with me, I pay a little bit more special attention to that first timer, you know, but I want to catch them up to the other people that are coming to see me too. So I want to make sure that that person is getting everything that they want. So I, the number one thing I give people is a journal, man. I go write down everything that you're doing because 
This way we can track your progress, right? If you're just starting out, you don't know how you're progressing, how you're growing, all these different things. I had a client, man, that in one year, she she went from deadlifting 65 pounds to over 150 pounds. What percentage of an increase is that, right? Over one year. So if I tell you I'm gonna increase your bank account 100% in a year, if it's zero, zero and 100, mm-hmm. but if I can increase whatever you're doing 100% in a year, that's a measurable, man. Those are things that you can look at as a beginner and go back and go, I'm not a beginner anymore. You know, I've now advanced to that intermediate stage. So, you know, the intangibles, you know, be committed to your program, you know, listen to what your coach is telling you to do because your coach has that experience, you know. The last thing for me is I love, absolutely love when a client says, hey, I was reading this article about fitness, right? I'm like, you're committed to to what you want to accomplish, you know? If you're not researching yourself what you want to do, what, what's that all about, right? How are you going to be successful if you're not looking at the ins and outs of, of where you want to get, you know? So those are the things that I look at with first timers, even my people that have been there for a long time. Be engaged, man. Be committed to your program. So a couple tell you or a few takeaways that I got from that. Um, number one, don't just show up, show out. Um, so don't, you know, don't just get up and get there, but actually give your all to the time that you're there. Um, journal, track your progress. Uh, it's really important too, because we're not going to remember, like our memory is limited. You know, you only have room for one thought at a time in your head. Multitasking is BS. Um, so, uh, write it down so that you can follow your progress. And then part of showing up is be committed to learning, learning more about what you're doing, educating yourself. That shows your level of commitment to, to what you're trying to accomplish. So, you know, when people say showing up is half the battle, that, that was not, showing up was not 50% of that. So, so yeah. What do you think for older athletes are the top three things maybe that top three, maybe priorities that they should focus on for longevity? Ooh, that's a really good question. If you're not doing maintenance, you know, and I, it, as in a seasoned athlete, I don't have to program those motor skill to learn for my body to learn what to do in fitness. It after a certain amount of time, it should know. Right. So your body gets a lot more familiar. So that's why I say with me, with instinctive training, my body knows what to do. You know, I I, a couple of weeks, a couple of months ago, I started trying to do hypertrophy training again. I gained like 10 pounds. I'm like, this is not where I want to be. So I, I tapered that back. But for the seasoned athlete, man, recovery, uber, uber important. The mobility stuff, huh, I cannot speak enough about that. You know, you can't make up mobility with your workout. That's that's just not going to happen for you. So I tell seasoned athletes, make sure that you're getting your proper rest, your proper recovery, and in your training, remove that freaking ego, man. You don't have to lift a building to be a really good athlete, you know. You just have to be consistent with your training, you know. So, so those are my keys for the aging athletes. You know, when it, the, the last one, because I, you talk about take the ego out, you know, a word that comes to my mind is patience, you know, being patient with your own progress because your progress is going to be different than somebody else's progress. And that's part of taking ego out. You know, would you say patience is, is a big priority or a big key? Patience is a number one, right? You know, it's, I, I love what you said about comparing yourself to people. You know, um, I have, and I was talking with my wife about this a couple of days ago, in business, since I first started this game of coaching, I have reinvented myself a few times, right? You know, I've had a bunch of self-realization stuff that that other coaches, other people have given me, you know? I got um, I got a, a message from a guy, and he's like, uh, he saw a video that I posted up in Big Bear, and he's like, hey, are you trying to be David Goggins? I'm like, fuck no, I'm not trying to be David Goggins. That motherfucker runs 100 miles. I don't want to run 100 miles, right? <laughs> but here's what I... What I take from David Goggins, David Goggins is a motherfucker who's com- who's very committed to what he's going to do, you know? And so that is that is a very admirable uh, trait to have in, in an athlete, you know? If I have an athlete that's committed, I mean, I can take that freaking athlete to the moon, you know? And that's, that's going to be a huge thing, you know? But if I have people who don't have that mindset of, of commitment, who, who, don't, who don't look at what they're doing as, you know, I got to be ready for this. You know, if they're coming up with all kinds of excuses and things, man, 
that's a that's a horrible mindset to be in, you know. So we've had some people on the show. Speaking of excuses, uh, I just interviewed a woman who spent the last nine years running across every state in the United States. Um, <laughs> she now she's done it like periods of months and then taken time off periods of months, but she just finished the last one, Alaska. Helene Neville's her name, and um, you know her thing is is like nothing's impossible and we need to remove excuses from our lives. And I, I took hers as we don't need it to all be her. Like, obviously, you know, I'm not looking to run across all the States in the country, but, and most people just need to get up and get moving. But sometimes you need people like that. And you know, when you talk about David Goggins, it's like, you need people like that to remind you that of, of the things that may be holding you up, even though you're not trying to be them, you know? So they may influence you in positive ways, but you don't necessarily have to try to be them. So I, you know, when I talked to Helene, I was just blown away by her story because just it's remarkable what she did. And it's like, when I think about, oh, I don't feel like doing my workout today. I think of this woman that spent nine years running across every state in the country to prove that excuses, they were, oh, I'm sure there were more than days where she didn't feel like running, but you know, it's like excuses are irrelevant. Like you, you don't need to do that. Yeah, you don't need to do that. So, you know, it's it's a good takeaway that, you know, you can look to people who are inspirational and still do your own thing, but take take good nuggets from them. So um, let's talk about the importance of coaching, importance of having a coach, because uh, I know you have strong opinions about this. <laughs> so, um, you know, I am a coach. I have coaches. I have coaches multiple and depending on the area of my life that I'm working on. You are a coach. You have coaches? I have coaches. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Tell me, why is it important to have a coach? Well, I look at it this way, you know, and we were talking about um, an athlete who wants to be a professional, you know. I have not, and I've been teaching um, group classes for 20 years, right? I have yet to have a professional athlete, a current professional athlete. Now, now I'm not talking about guys who used to be pros and retire. I'm talking about a guy that's at the top of his freaking game or girl at the top of their game right now. I have yet to have one of those people come to a boot camp class, right? And they look at that as a waste of their time and a waste of their athletic efforts, you know? So a person that's looking to climb to another level Go get a coach, man. Go get someone that that removes your your thinking, that removes your, you know, um, all the little intricacies and just be there, right? Have them look at what you're doing, coach you through what you're doing, motivate you, do all those things that you can do on your own, but but you don't hold yourself as accountable as a coach will, you know? I have business coaches, I have therapy coaches, I have, I have doctors that I talk to all the time. I even have a coach. I like to say, I, I do this thing called coaches clinic. I like having coaches come and train with me because I know that those coaches are badasses, right? Those coaches are not going to let me kick their butt and I'm not going to let them kick my butt. So we're going to have a nice, good freaking battle session, right? So th those are the types of things that I like to do. I met you through Coaches Clinic. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. I actually saw, I saw co other coaches I know doing it and I'm like, I want in on that. That looks fun. Firestorm, right? With the first one you came to? The, the free running. I will never forget the parkour day where we were taking a, an adult private free running parkour class while kids classes were happening at the same time. There is perhaps nothing more terrifying in the world than taking a parkour class as an adult for the first time while kids classes are happening because the kids are fearless and I was not. But did you learn something? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. I learned something and I had fun. I was going to say, did you have fun? That's what's important, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I mean, I've never forgotten that class. I've never forgotten. So, yeah. How about, so you talk about the professional athlete, the next level. I think a lot of our listeners are more weekend warriors, uh, everyday athletes, maybe people who are just, tr you know, thinking about like, I want to do my first fill in the blank. Tell me about how a coach can be helpful in that area. Well, yeah, weekend warriors, that's, that's, uh, for me, that's like, uh, no, you know, I, because I, I, I think you're either going to be all in. If you're halfway in, you're going to get half the freaking results. Right. So weekend warriors, I tell people this one thing. You're an athlete. Right. I don't care if you are on a couch sitting down. Human beings were meant to move, chase, climb. All those are the things. Right. So when you make that decision to to want to change your life, 
and you go see a coach, a coach is responsible for you starting to find a love and a and you know some some kind of a better understanding of fitness, you know? So for me, when athletes come to see me and I see that progress for those athletes, man, and like I said, I know we're talking about beginners, but I look at every single human being as an athlete and I look at to improve that athletic performance, whether it be for a, let's just say a, a AIDS walk or, you know, a some kind of charity walk, whatever you want to do, whatever goal you have as a beginner, I want to have you fall in love with fitness. I want to have you fall in love with going to hike. I want to have you fall in love with being outdoors and doing things like that. So I don't, you know, the, the word beginner to me, it, it's, it's, it's one of those scenes where I go, eh, no, you, you, beginners when you first were born, right? At this stage in our lives, we are constantly improving, 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 right? And so I say, if you're not growing, you're shrinking, right? Or you're just sitting still. Yeah. It sounds like to me, there's probably a mindset that people have when they come to you and you make it your mission to shift that mindset because people might come to you and be like, I am a beginner. I am a novice. I don't know how to do this. Weekend warrior, my definition of weekend warrior is just people who have to work and also want to be competitive and want to, you know, it's like they can't devote the time that a professional athlete would devote as much as they would want to. Do you understand how many Olympic athletes have normal, regular jobs? They're elite athletes, right? Right, right, right. <laughs> well, that's, yeah, that's the misconception in the world that they're all just getting paid by sponsorships. A person that says, oh, I have to work, right? That's a fucking excuse, right? Because there are athletes who work regular jobs just like you do that are, either before work, after work, or on lunchtime, whatever they need to do for that day, they're getting their shit in, man. They're not making that excuse. I got kids at home. I got to do this. I got to cook dinner. No, 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 no. I'm going to go get what I have to get because I got a goal, right? If I told you that I'm going to pay you a million bucks to run down the street at 5 a.m., you can bet your ass you're going to be out there at 5 a.m., right? Uh, yeah. Are you going to pay me $5 million to run down the street at 5 a.m.? And it doesn't matter if you're a beginner or not, right? <laughs> you will kill yourself to go out and do that. So for me, looking at my goal, that goal is my five five million bucks, right? So I'm going to freaking go attack that goal. I don't want to look back doing something like that, you know? So I'm going to do all the prep and prepare my athletes the same way, you know? Absolutely. So it's, it's about, again, that shift in mindset that you're like, I'm going in and I'm like, well, I got to work and I got kids and I got family and I don't know how to do anything. And you're helping them to understand that they are. I mean, you use the word athlete constantly, like for everybody. So it's like, it, and I think that's very, I don't know if that's even intentional with you anymore. Like maybe at once upon a time it was, but now it's just like, this is who you are. Yeah. Well, so I was, I say athlete because from birth, you look at a kid that's learning to walk, a uh, a two-year-old to a five-year-old is the best moving human being you ever want to see in your life. They're the best athlete waiting to happen, right? So it depends on, from that age, what you do with them. You're either going to ruin their feet, ruin their knees, ruin their hips, ruin their lower back by having them sit in chairs and all those other things, or you're going to have them go run outside, play outside, climb on shit and all those other things. But I guarantee goddamn to you that all those kids, when you were growing up, the ones that climbed trees, the ones that jumped off of shit, those are the athletes now. The ones that sat in the house, Come on, man. You know, they're not doing that stuff. And that's why so many of us in our 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, beyond are trying to make up for lost time because we didn't do that for whatever reason. And now we we want to. I'll say this. And like I, I, we had this conversation about reinventing. Right. I I am a, I am my own worst critic. You know, I look back over my life and I sat and watched things that I did. And I go, man, I did. I did a lot of freaking half ass shit. Right. And so. There's there's never a time in your life where you can't correct that, you know? So if you get in this habit of thinking, I am this, right? Well, you, you just, that's finality for me, you know? I've reinvented myself to a, a person who, I don't take shit, man. I don't take shit and I don't make excuses. It's like, I'm going to go do, right? Because doing is what's going to make you successful. Not doing is going to make you fail, right? So Q, uh, we're going to get ready to wrap up, but... First of all, for, for those who might be listening and being like, I, I want to get with that guy. I like, I am fired up right now. I want to quit making excuses. I want to be an athlete. I'm ready for this. Uh, do you train people locally? You're, we're here in LA. Do you train people locally or do you train people anywhere? I train people everywhere. You know, I do uh, remote training by computer where you got my ugly face sitting <laughs> on the camera telling you to, <laughs> telling you to go out and do stuff, right? 
I also do stuff locally. I'm up in LA right now because I had a, a patient up here today. And um, so two birds, one stone, right? So I, wherever you want to be is where I'm going to be. You know, I'm actually, I just started promoting a camp in Big Bear that I'm doing to get Spartan athletes ready to run that Big Bear race because people go up there and they freaking suffer, man. I say, come suffer with me for a little while. I'll have you ready for that kind of stuff where if you suffer with me, the Big Bear Spartan race is going to be fun for you, right? <laughs> so, um, Q, how can people how can people reach you? How can they find you? You can reach me multiple ways. My website is qthecoach.com. I am Q underscore the underscore coach on Instagram. You can find me at Coach Q on Facebook as well. So no excuses. Various ways to find Coach Q. Before we go, and I'm going to put you on the spot here. If you could leave with one parting piece of wisdom today, what would that be? One parting piece piece of wisdom adjust your mindset and stay consistent super simple super simple and sometimes the best the best wisdom is simple adjust your mindset and stay consistent that is something we can all do like two things right there that we can do today right now so perfect perfect way to wrap this up coach q thank you so much for being on the season athlete podcast fist bump this is our second fist bump of the day the first one kind of (laughs) hurt He's, and he's saying it's my fault. I apparently need to toughen up my fist. I got to toughen up my fist here at my own gym. Uh, but it, I've already improved. So we're learning. We're learning just like you talked about. Uh, so thank you so much for being on the show. You know, we've been going back and forth about having you come in and do this interview. So I'm glad we were able to work it out. You know, you were up here in uh, Santa Monica where we're at. He told me, I, I'm actually going to, right before we wrap up, um, Q told me this cool story about how he was doing therapy on a patient. And the patient had a dog. And uh, you actually did therapy on the dog. So real quick before we go, I want to hear a little bit about that story and how, how, you know, helping humans and helping animals can be similar. Well, the patient was the dog. <laughs> and so I'm, I've been treating this dog now for about three months. He's got um, arthritis in his hips. And his owner, I finally, finally met him. And he came in today and he's telling me his back is hurting, his knee is hurting, and he can't sleep. This day. I go, you know, I treat humans as a business. I go, the dog thing is just like a side thing, right? I go, but a living, breathing human is the same thing as a living, breathing animal. So I can treat you too. And he's like, oh my God, I didn't know that. <laughs> and so, so he thought you were like the vet, the local veterinarian. He's a Milan, the freaking, the dog whisperer. <laughs> so humans and dogs, if you, if anyone has an ailment. If you dysfunction, I can treat that shit, man. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> All right. So humans, animals, whatever it be, we're going to put everything in the show notes and the website for this episode as well. Q, thank you so much for being on the Season Athlete Podcast today. This was awesome. Yeah, I love being here. Thank you. All right, seasoned athletes, here are my top three takeaways from Coach Q. Number one, be committed to your training program. This may take some patience on your end, but the end result is worth it. If someone offered to pay you a large sum of money to run down the street, you'd do it, right? View your goal as that pile of cash. Journaling and tracking your workouts are tools that can help you stay on track, but ditch the excuses and focus on that commitment. As Q says, adjust your mindset and stay consistent. Number two, research and learn about what you're trying to achieve. Train your brain along with your body. The more you're willing to learn, the more likely you will be invested and engaged with what you're doing, and the more likely you will be to stay consistent with it. And number three, as a seasoned athlete, always make sure to make recovery and mobility as much of a focus for you as your training. Thanks again to Coach Q. Thank you for listening to the Seasoned Athlete Podcast. The music you heard in this episode is from someone who knows a little something about being committed to his craft, Jason Achilles. Learn more about him at jasonachilles.com. Do you know someone who would make a great guest on the show? Or do you have a unique and inspirational story to share? Shoot us an email, seasonedathlete at gmail.com. Check out our entire library of episodes and learn about our distinguished seasoned athlete alumni at seasonedathlete.me. While you're there, click on the support seasoned athlete button to help us continue to share stories of ageless athletes and their remarkable journeys. Now go out there and embrace your extraordinary, my fellow seasoned athletes, because you so can.